Good morning and welcome everyone. Good morning. Um, special announcements for today. Uh, Project MICA that we've been doing for several weeks. Uh, wanted to extend a thank you to everyone and your support for that. Um, oh Lord, I give my life to you. I trust in you, my God. Do not let me be disgraced or let my enemies rejoice in my defeat. No one who trusts in you will ever be disgraced, but disgrace comes to those who try to deceive others. Show me the right path, O Lord. Point out the road for me to follow. Lead me by your truth and teach me, for you are the God who saves me. All day long I put my hope in you. The Lord is a friend to those who fear him. He teaches them his God. May integrity and honesty protect me, for I put my hope in you. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Let us pray. O Lord, grant us wisdom to recognize the treasures you have stored up for us in heaven, that we may never despair, but always rejoice and be thankful for the riches of your grace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Be seated, please. Good morning. Our first reading comes to us from Ecclesiastes. Vanity of vanities, says the preacher. Vanity of vanities, all is vanity. I, the preacher, have been king over Israel in Jerusalem, and I applied my heart to seek and to search out by wisdom all that is done under heaven. It is an unhappy business that God has given to the children of man to be busy with. I have seen everything that is done under the sun, and behold, all is vanity and a striving after wind. I hated all my toil in which I toil under the sun, seeing that I must leave it to the man who will come after me, and who knows whether he will be wise or a fool. Yet he will be master for all which I toiled and used my wisdom under the sun. This also is vanity. So I turned about and gave my heart up to despair over all the toil of my labors under the sun. Because sometimes a person has to toil with wisdom and knowledge and skill, must leave everything to be enjoyed by someone who did not toil for it. This also is vanity and a great evil. What has man from all the toil and striving of heart with which he toils beneath the sun? For all his days are full of sorrow, and his work is a vexation. Even, if the, even in the night his heart does not rest, this also is vanity. There is nothing better for a person than that should he eat, drink, and find enjoyment in his toil. This also, I saw, is from the hand of God, for apart from him, who can eat and who can have enjoyment? For the one who pleases him, God has given wisdom and knowledge and joy. But the sinner has given the business of gathering and collecting only to give one who pleasures God. This also is vanity and a striving after win. This is the word of the Lord. Our second reading comes from Colossians chapter 3. If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you will also appear with him in glory. Put to death, therefore, what is earthly in you, sexual immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, and covetousness, which is idolatry. On account of these, the wrath of God is coming. In these you too once walked when you were living in them, but now you must put them all away, anger, wrath, malice, slander, and obscene talk from your mouth. 
Do not lie to one another, seeing that you have put off the old self with its practices and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge after the image of its creator. Here there is not Greek and Jew, circumcised and uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave, free, but Christ is all and in all. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 12th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Someone in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. But he said to him, Man, who made me a judge or arbiter over you? And he said to them, Take care and be on your guard against all covetousness, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions. And he told them a parable, saying, The land of a rich man produced plentifully. And he thought to himself, What shall I do? For I have nowhere to store my crops. And he said, I will do this. I will tear down my barns and build larger ones. And there I will store all my grain and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, you have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, eat, drink, be merry. But God said to him, Fool, This night your soul is required of you, and the things you have prepared, whose will they be? So is the one who lays up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Be seated, please. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, Some years back, I was at a a board meeting, and one of the members of that particular board resigned. So I asked the person to give an explanation as to why, and it was a very brief answer that they gave. My heart isn't in it. Now, I tried to get more of an answer, tried to ply them to open up, but I was not successful. How much of what a person does in life is really a matter of the heart. Sometimes we get detail and sometimes we don't. If our heart is in something, we are going to commit to that. And if our heart isn't in it, well, we're not. Solomon, in the writer of the book of Ecclesiastes, he was king over Israel and he resided in Jerusalem. And he wrote in Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 13, I applied my heart to seek and to search out by wisdom all that is done under heaven. That's a pretty big undertaking. He applied his heart to try to understand life and people, work and God and how it all fits together. He makes some interesting observations in his writing. And he makes some statements that I think can be valuable to us in our life. Now, I think you guys will all agree with me that uh, life is busy. You, You agree with me on that one? Life is busy. We have lots and lots of things to do. I find people's schedules are often very full. And here's just an example. Sometimes I spend more time trying to schedule a meeting with somebody than it takes for the meeting itself. (laughs) Isn't that kind of crazy? I'll spend easily over an hour of time, sometimes, to get a meeting scheduled that's only going to be an hour. Wow. When, When that's the case, I start to wonder, geez, why didn't I just take care of it myself? Might have been more efficient that way, but it does depend upon what the focus is. Why is it so hard? Because people's schedules are so busy. I think you probably can relate to that fact that life is very busy. Do you find value and worth in your business and your busyness of life? I use those two words together on purpose. 
I find it interesting the difference between those two words is just a Y and an I. Business is the work that we do to serve someone, the enterprise that we operate to make a profit. Business is about providing a service or a product. That is what you have to do to be successful. And of course, you hope to yield a profit. It's clear, it's definable when you have a business. Every employee of every company, they engage in the business as well. They provide a service and they expect to be paid. You know what that's called? Profit. Every employee expects to get paid. There is this profit thing. Often success is determined by profitability. But is that really the measure of success for us in life? Busyness, on the other hand, is doing all sorts of things, often with a purpose, but oftentimes busyness is viewed as going through the motions for the sake of going through the motions. Uh, maybe you think of busyness that way, maybe not. A person can be very busy but still feel like they've accomplished nothing. Now we're kind of getting to busyness. That you're kind of running around, chasing your tail, you're doing all sorts of things, and at the end of the day you're going, and what did I do? And what did I accomplish? What has been done may be clear and definable, Yet a person can question the long-term value of what they have done. All three of our scripture readings today raise the issue of what is at the heart. What is the focus of your heart? What is it that has your attention? In Luke chapter 12, uh, our gospel reading, Jesus is addressing the subject of coveting. There's this disagreement over an inheritance as there's a person in the crowd that demands that Jesus intervene and to settle this dispute over possessions. I find it absolutely fascinating. Jesus didn't take the bait and he didn't settle the dispute. He didn't negotiate the inheritance. He didn't get involved with that. Rather, he sees this as a wonderful opportunity to teach and he has the people reflect upon coveting, but really he's getting at what is going on in your heart. It's a matter of the heart. That's really what this is about. Who is the greedy one? Now, it could be the one that is asking Jesus to settle this, the dispute, or it could be the other brother. Who knows? You know what? It doesn't really matter which one is the greedy one. Covetousness is generally the result of thinking that your life will be richer if you obtain more possessions or more money. Is that what provides richness in your life? Jesus wants the listener to think about what or who makes your life rich. Are you rich because of the abundance of your possessions? Is a person rich because of the success of their work or the success of their business? Is a person rich because of the abundance of their wealth? Is this what gives value and meaning to life? Back to Solomon in Ecclesiastes. In chapter two, verse 18, it says, I hated all my toil, seeing that I must leave it to those who come after me. And who knows whether they are going to be a wise or a fool. Hmm. Yet they will be master of all for which I have toiled. You're going to leave everything to someone else. And you don't even have to wait until you die. You leave a job, guess what? you're leaving it to somebody after you. You have a business. You stop running the business. You sell it. You 
are leaving it to somebody. You give somebody a gift, a Christmas gift, a birthday gift, guess what? You no longer have control over it. It's up to them on what they are going to do with it. When you leave something for someone, it's just out of your control. In chapter 2, verse 21, it says, Sometimes a person who has toiled with wisdom and knowledge and skill must leave everything to be enjoyed by someone who did not toil for it. When you leave something, I'm going to use an example here to the next generation, they may use it for their own enjoyment, but their idea of enjoying it may be quite different than yours. I want to point out something that's going on within our country, um, pretty much broad scale. I want you to look and think about how many churches are being abandoned and converted into some use other than for the worship of God and for the ministry of God's kingdom. People are indeed enjoying those spaces, but they're doing it in their own way. Probably not the intent of those that committed time and talent and treasures in the building of those facilities and for the purpose of what they had in mind. But you know what? There's certain things that are just outside of our control. In chapter 2, verse 23, it says, work is a vexation. Even in the night, his heart does not rest. You ever have one of those nights that you have trouble sleeping? And you know you got something brewing on your head or in your head. You just can't let it go and it keeps replaying. It's bothering you in your heart. Are you troubled at night by your work or your life's work? It could be any sort of thing. There's a good possibility it's because you're trying to control something that's outside of your control. At least that's been my personal experience. When I've had difficulty sleeping, it's because, well, it's taken me a little while to realize I'm trying to control something that I cannot. You can try to seek fulfillment in your heart based upon things or even the actions of other people. How much of our success, what we view as success, is determined by the decisions and the actions of other people? And if that's the case, ooh, we're on shaky ground. When our hearts are preoccupied with things outside of our control, that our hearts are not resting as God intended. In chapter 2, verse 24, it says, There is nothing better for a person than he would eat, drink, and find enjoyment in his toil. For this is from the hand of God. We all know what the Lord Jesus Christ has done for us. He has forgiven us of our sins. He is with us always to lead us and guide us. Yet we can still have things that trouble us in our hearts. It is a great gift from God when we find satisfaction in that daily bread that he provides. There's many blessings and opportunities that we have. But there's something special about being content and feeling blessed and having an opportunity to have enjoyable toil or work, whether it's a business or taking care of things at home. Just being content in life with what God has blessed you with. You see, there's a lot more than doing things for the sake of profit, whatever that might be. This is a matter of having your heart filled with Christ. This is a matter of seeking and having your minds on heavenly matters. He leads us to set aside those things that 
attract us in sinful ways. He leads us to cherish the riches of God's grace in Jesus Christ. He makes a heart rich, even if you might lack what the world considers to be earthly riches. Ecclesiastes chapter 2, verse 26, it says, For the one who pleases him, that's God, God has given wisdom and knowledge and joy. See, that joy in life, it's a matter of the heart. And it's important that we have our heart resting in the Lord. There are indeed times that things get out of our control. Um, Shall I point to the screen and the computer and the slides that went haywire? But you know what? All is good. We have a great and abundant God that leads us and guides us. If that thing doesn't work for a day, it's okay. We live in the grace of Jesus Christ. We worship him from our heart. That we should never lose sight of. In Jesus' name, amen. Now may the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us rise and we'll confess our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you and for his sake, forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O Lord God, Heavenly Father, by, by the blessed light of your divine word, you have led us to the knowledge of your Son. Grant us the grace of your Holy Spirit that we may ever walk in the light of your truth, rejoicing with sure confidence in Christ, our Savior. And Lord, we ask you to lead us and guide us each day. Help us, Lord, to see the great riches that you've given to us in your Son, Jesus Christ. Have us live our lives in that richness, being thankful for all the blessings that you bring our way each and every day. Help us, Lord, to find great value in the work that we do, in its great variety, whether it be for a company or work at home, work with our family. As we put our hands to the task, we ask you, Lord, to lead us and guide us in your grace. And Lord, we lift up to you those that we have on our health concern list, and anyone else that we may have in our hearts. 
We place them all into your care, Lord, and we trust in your divine provision, working through all the medical professionals and through family and friends to provide support and encouragement. And Lord, there's been several terrible tragedies in our country over the last couple of days. Obviously, there are hearts that are broken and distressed, and we ask you, Lord, to bring peace to them. There's some great trouble going on within our country. We ask you, Lord, to touch the hearts of people, to soften them, that they would work together in a kind way, soften people's words, their rhetoric, their actions. Lead us to be people full of the grace of your Son, Jesus Christ, that we love one another as you have loved us. And we pray as Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.